Welcome to the ITDVDs.com YouTube channel. This is just a sample of the training available at ITDVDs.com. If you would like to see complete training, please go to ITDVDs.com. Now let's begin the sample. Preparing and extending the Active Directory Scheme is something that definitely shouldn't be taken lightly. We actually want to take steps to make sure that if something goes wrong, we can recover from it. Because extending the Active Directory Schema is irreversible, meaning we can't roll it back. Basically, we've got to stop replication on the Schema Master and then make sure everything goes okay with the extension and then re-enable our replication. And if something did go wrong, then we would completely blow away the server that was the Schema Master, go over to another domain controller, seize the Schema Master role, and rebuild the domain controller that we blew away. So you can see it's it's a pretty serious step here and if for some reason something goes wrong and it propagates out to your domain well you got serious problems. So we want to be very very careful. Now we're going to need an account that can run the command that will actually extend the schema and it needs to be a member of a few groups. I'm going to, on a domain controller and I'm going to go to Active Directory Users and Computers And I'm actually going to use my administrator account, but it can be any domain account. But the key is, if I go to member of, it needs to be a member of the schema admins group, the enterprise admins group, and the domain. I'm sorry, the domain admins group. And it also needs to be a local administrator on the server we're running it on. And I'm actually going to run it from my Exchange server. It, the server, you know, you don't have to run it from your Exchange server, but it does need to be a 64-bit server, and the server needs to be in the same site as your schema master. So again, to figure out your schema master, we can just open up a command prompt, and you can do this from any server. And I'm going to go ahead and paste in my command. It's netdom query slash domain, the domain you're working with, and fsmo. You can see my schema master here is DC01. And I know DC01 is in my same site as my Exchange server. Now one thing we'll also probably want to do is do a full system state backup of our schema master just in case. So now let's go over to our Exchange server. And we're actually going to need to install some Active Directory remote server administrative tools on this. And one of the easiest ways to do it is go to administrative tools, open up our PowerShell modules, and I'm just going to run the command add-windows-feature-rsat-adds. Hit enter. And that's going to go ahead and install our remote server administration tools for Active Directory. And we need these tools in order to be able to run the command that will actually extend the schema. Okay, that ran successfully. I'll go ahead and close out. Now we're going to open up a command prompt, run as administrator. And we're going to go to the drive that has our DVD in it. Mine's in my D drive. So I'm going to type in D colon, hit enter. And I'm going to type in setup space slash prepare schema. And before I press enter, I'm going to go over to my domain controller. That's my schema master. Here I am on DC01. I've got an administrative command prompt open. And I'm going to type in the command rep admin space slash options space DC01, which is my schema master, a space, then the plus sign disable underscore outbound underscore REPL. Hit enter. And obviously we want to do this during some kind of maintenance window when, you know, things might be able to go a little bit wrong and we have some time to fix it. But all we're doing here is we're stopping replication. So it really shouldn't break anything. We're just stopping replication while we extend the schema. So we can see that our current DSA option was IS underscore GC, and now we've got the disable outbound RPL. So now let's go back over to Exchange and run that command to extend the schema. Again, setup space slash prepare schema. I'll go ahead and hit enter, and it gives you a little message saying if you agree to the license terms don't do anything but if you want to cancel this press a button to cancel it if you don't press a button it's going to go on and extend the schema it's going to copy the setup files 
It's going to go through a prerequisite check. And if you pass the prerequisite check, it'll go ahead and extend the Active Directory schema. And while this is running, one thing I want to note is that technically, if you just run the Exchange installer, it will run this for you, the prepare schema, and actually prepare a Active Directory, which we're going to do next. But really, you want to do it manually because one, if something goes wrong, you know exactly where it went wrong. And two, for replication purposes, if you have a lot of domain controllers, you have to wait for replication to finish on this prepare schema process before you move on to the prepare active directory. And the, the installer isn't going to wait. It's just going to go ahead and do it. So if you've just got one domain controller, that's going to work fine. But if you've got more than one, you're probably going to run into problems. So like in a lab, it might work great, but in production, it might not work. And really, when you're doing it in a lab, you want to test it out like you're doing it in production. So it's best to do it manually. Okay, and the Active Directory schema was extended successfully. So that's good. That's what we want to see. If we don't see that, then we probably want to figure out the problem before we re-enable replication on our schema master. So it completed successfully. So let's go back over to our schema master. And we're going to run the same command, except instead of a plus, we're going to use a minus sign. So I'll go ahead and hit enter. And you can see now the new DSA options are back to is underscore GC. So by doing this, we've re-enabled replication.